Welcome to the Family Wellbeing Program. We realise as students that crisis and emotion is part of your everyday life. Please sit back and relax as you enjoy our presentation to you today about crisis and emotion and the techniques that may help you with dealing with these situations. Hi, my name's Hannah Tankard and I'm a facilitator of the Family Wellbeing Empowerment Program of Crisis and Emotions. We understand that university can be a very stressful time, especially for first year students. Are you boggled down in stress, in too much uni assignments, in the never ending readings, and the dreaded exam that's worth 50%? Well today, we have a program that's gonna help you have some keys to overcoming these issues. So sit back, relax, and just enjoy this program. The first step that we're going to run through is crisis. Now when we're thinking about crisis, especially in terms of university, what things come to mind? Is it the crisis of getting a uni assessment done that's due the next day that you may or may not have started that night? Is it these readings that are becoming overwhelming? Is it your level of education or knowledge about the subject? Have a think about that for a second. Though you think that this crisis that you're facing right now in university is so overwhelming that it can't be overcome, do you know that this crisis has the opportunity for you to be able to develop new skills of facing hard situations? You can build strength, even compassion, understanding and confidence in yourself to get through this. We're going to give you some tips on how you might be able to do this. So welcome everyone to our first empowerment program. How are we all feeling today? Stressed. You're stressed and tired. What about you Amanda? Tired, tired. and Brittany? Stressed, definitely. Yeah. Well it can be like that sometimes, especially with uni. Um, why don't we just all go through, because we're going to start off with crisis and looking at um, the types of crisis that we have in our lives. and. Obviously, it's all related to our first year at uni um, for all of you today, but there's unique aspects to them. Um, so why don't we just start with you, Helena, and you can outline the crisis that you're facing at the moment. Juggling everything, my job, my work, my horse, it's just all too much, and the housework, mm. it's just hard. Yeah, so you're thinking of Dropping it. Dropping? Yeah, it's just better for me to do full-time work. I just don't have the time to okay. study. Yeah, what about you, Amanda? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about cutting back at least because with the kids at home and I'm a bit the same as Helena, struggling with the housework and, mm. and cooking and cleaning and getting to school mm. on time and just, yeah, ha especially having a young one at home as well. Makes yeah. it even worse. So, yeah. So sorry, what were you thinking of doing with your uni studies? At least dropping some of the courses, okay. like yeah, cutting back to either part time or even very like only taking one class, just until I can get my head around it all. Yeah. So that's great, girls. That's really outlined what crisis is. I'll just give you a quick rundown of what the Family Wellbeing Program describes a crisis as. So a crisis involves a disturbance of previous balance within. Um, a breakdown of the old ways which brings the pain of letting go. Uh, discovery that one's usual coping patterns no longer work. A transition phase from the disintegration of the old to the emergence of the new. And it is during this time that we have the choice about how we react to the crisis. If we try to fight it and stop the change or if we allow the change to happen with an attitude of openness. So that brings us to emotions and what emotions we feel within the crisis that we're facing. Um, so why don't Brittany, why don't you just talk about some of the emotions that come to mind within your crisis of university? Um, sure. Well, um, I've been feeling overwhelmed with the amount of work um, and I suppose a bit put out by all the group work we have to do. Mm. Um, so what emotions are you feeling? Are you angry? Maybe you're fear, you're sad or guilt or... Do you want to just talk a bit more about that? Well, I guess um, fear of whether I'm going to pass or not. Yeah. Um, and what scores I will be getting. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's really good, Brittany. Thank you for that. That's great. So we've looked at what kind of things we might be feeling, what emotions we feel during these stressful times at uni. So maybe fear of failing or guilt of letting a team down in team group work. Um, why don't we move on to, uh, sorry, the sorts of um, mechanisms that we use to overcome these emotions. So why don't we go with you, Amanda? What do you feel um, and what do you do uh, to cope with these emotions? Uh, sometimes, like, I usually, if I need to have a good cry, I go have a shower, have a good cry in the shower. Have a shower. But yeah. I have found one thing that's really worked is I've been walking the kids to school on my days off from uni. And just walking through the wetlands has been really helpful. And just the fresh air, and you start to feel good about yourself and more positive. Mm -hmm. According to a study conducted by Tankard 2014, physical activity is a great way to relieve stress. So, if you like riding bikes or going for a walk, that could be a great way. So Helena, what do you do to cope with these emotions that you're feeling during this stressful time? I don't cope, I don't know what to do to make myself relax and just sit down and do the work. I just try and it just doesn't work because my mind's flooded with all these different thoughts. It just doesn't work. I'm really at it. ends me. I'm lost. Okay. Well, why don't we work through some uh, coping mechanisms that maybe you don't know you do but you actually do. So, uh, do you have any hobbies? Yes, yes, I ride horses. You ride horses. Now, uh, do you ride horses when you're happy or do you ride horses as well when you're feeling negative emotions? Negative and happy. Yeah. Whenever I have time. Yeah. So do you think that maybe taking some time out to ride horses during a stressful period would help you? Yes. That would be that would work. Yeah, because what do you feel after you rode horse? Relaxed. Yeah. Relieved. Well, I think that you might have a good coping skill. So like the girls have already shared, there is certain ways that we can learn to cope with the emotions that we're feeling during university and all the stresses and pressures that are coming at us. Um, according to the Family Wellbeing Program, uh, there's a certain ways that we can deal with these negative emotions, especially in regard to anger or fear. So one way is to take time out and breathe. You might not be feeling that you can take time out, but sometimes that's all you need to be able to clear your head and gain perspective. Another way is safe physical expression, uh, moving in energy, like we've already talked about with walking or riding your bike. Uh, other ways could be playing squash, even cleaning the house if you really like to clean. Uh, hitting a pillow if you need to take some frustration out. Maybe it's getting involved in a sport, a netball or basketball team could really help as well. It's also really good to think about what you want to do rather than simply lashing out. Gaining perspective about about university, about your dreams and aspirations for life. Maybe you just need to write an angry letter to a person you're angry at with and then burn it. So maybe it's your lecturer, maybe it's your teacher, maybe it's someone in the group. Maybe you just need to write that down on paper and decide to burn it and let it go. Uh, another way is uh, listen to yourself. What is your anger or fear telling you? And what change do you need to make to change the situation? How do you gain control over this situation? It might be sorting out your study books. It might be getting a new folder. It might be clearing out the old stuff that can be chucked away. Is it just, yeah, getting rid of the clutter? Have a think about that for yourself. Or is it a morning coffee run? that'll help kickstart your day and give you the motivation you need to get through a big, heavy day at uni. Now, as we've all talked about, we're all, we're all fearing um, 
university and maybe even failing a subject. Are we all in agreement with that? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the really key ways is to be able to create a safe environment for you to speak to someone that you believe can help you. So why don't we just go around the room and uh, offer suggestions of who you think might be able to help overcome these situations. So Helena, who do you think that you could go to? Family and friends would be my first point of call. Yep, and why would that be? Because they know what I'm going through and they can help me in at home as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, I don't know, they're just the support that you need. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, Helena. And what about you, Brittany? Who do you think that you'd go to to be able to help support you other than the Family Wellbeing Program? Um, well, I've been looking towards the groups. Um, if I'm not coping, I just let them know and often they can help with the work or clarify what needs doing. Yep, so your um, group work, your teams that you're yeah. in at uni? Yeah, definitely. They've been very helpful. That's really good, Brittany. That's great to have the peer support and to create friendships along the way. And lastly, what about you, Amanda? Um, I found that um, the student counsellor that's involved at the uni um, has been great support. Um, I've also been told that she offers different skills and also can refer you on to other people if you need that and also the lecturer if I'm really having any dramas I've called them up and said look you know such and such is sick and I've had him up at the hospital and they've pretty much given me ways on, on ways to get around it or yeah. help with that so it's been That's great. That's really good. So the last topic that we're going to cover um, in skills of o overcoming this fear that we have towards university is changing this anxiety uh, to anticipation. So why don't we just go around the room and we'll talk about what you aspire to become or maybe the reason why you've, um, you're in the course that you're in. So Helena, can you just tell us a bit about what you're anticipating to come because of this course? In the future I want to be able to help individuals and empower them to go out and make a difference in their life mm. and by using animals would be a good way I think to get through to people with those because animals are very therapeutic as I know yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with this course do you think it would give you the skills and yes, for sure. qualifications yeah. that are necessary? For sure. Yeah. That's great. And what about you Brittany? Well, I'm anticipating um, finishing this course so that, like Helena said, I can empower other people um, instead of just giving them the resources to do it. Actually, like teaching them how to help themselves first. Mm. So yeah, that's great. And lastly, Helena, how are you feeling? I feel that when I'm stressed, I should go for a ride and. If I prepare myself and write down what's coming up, then maybe I'll be able to ensure that I have everything in on time. Yeah. That's Ladies, right. thank you so much for participating and having input in the group. It's really great that you all were able to contribute and, yeah, play a part. Even though we're stressed, I think that each one of you, as you've said, has been able to walk away feeling, uh, uh, feeling better and having a better perspective about university. So thank you um, for watching, whoever you are right now. And we understand that the stresses of uni can be hard, but as you've learned today, there are ways of coping. So we hope that through this video, you, you're able to gain skills and knowledge about what steps you can take to be able to gain perspective and continue on with your uni.